Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel and if it's your first time here, well, welcome. If you watch my channel, you know that I'm a very frequent flyer out of the C and D terminals at LaGuardia Airport, but today I'm going to try something different. I've got a flight booked on United Airlines, which is going to be operating out of the new Terminal B. I am super excited about this and I'm bringing you along with me. I am en route to my favorite airport this afternoon, and I'm excited for my trip to Chicago O'Hare later today. I'm also excited that LaGuardia arrivals are landing on runway four because I'm on the Grand Central Parkway. You know what that means? This is an exciting airport, and equally as thrilling is the new Terminal B. The meandering roadways almost fooled me leading towards Terminal C and D, which I've been covering very heavily on this channel, but they'll eventually lead me to a place that I've not been to since before the new construction. Terminal B, the new $5 billion terminal, which was 95% complete at the time of this building. We all know the story when then-Vice President Joe Biden referred to LaGuardia Airport as a third world country, and this statement was the first step in rebuilding the terminals. Well, here I am now at the first terminal to get completely torn down and rebuilt. This is super exciting. This drop-off area is huge, very unlike what existed here in the past. Let's get out of the car and into Terminal B. Wow, this is like being in a whole different world. I cannot believe that I've actually not been here before. I'm about to walk into the terminal for the very first time. Kind of strange for me since I love LaGuardia Airport so much. So I want to give you my actual reaction to when I walk in. Is this LaGuardia? Wow. Amazing. This space is grand with a capital G. This space is absolutely gorgeous. One thing I noticed is that the airlines are all located in different islands. I've not seen that at LaGuardia before. And the airline I'm flying today, United, has its check-in desks by the F sign. Before I do some exploring, I want to drop off my check bag. I'm flying in first class today, so I located the premier access line, but it was longer than the other line, so I used a counter with no line at all to drop off my bag. It was a smooth process and a slick atmosphere. There is a lot to see here. I just dropped off one bag at the United Airlines bag drop area, but before I head on over to TSA, I need to walk around this absolutely stunning terminal. This beautiful piece of art is called Shorter Than The Day. I actually want my day to be longer because I want to spend a lot of time in this terminal. It's unbelievable. Shorter Than The Day is a key art installation in the public area. On it are 900 photos of the sky above New York. The sky above New York is what a huge portion of this channel is about, so I'm absolutely loving this piece of art. And I'm at LaGuardia. Shorter than the day is also visible in the lower level where the arrivals are, so I'm going to go down there and check it out before I go through security. Going down the escalator, my mind made me feel like I was in some faraway city thousands of miles from New York. To think that the old parking garage occupied the space where I am now is just boggling. This is the new Terminal B, and I am in awe. I can't believe the sheer size of the baggage claim area. In my mind, I'm thinking about the old Terminal B. It was a very, very tight area, not very spacious, very old. This is worlds of a difference. This is open and airy and completely unlike the airport's previous baggage claim area. Here's a reminder that I'm in New York, and even better, the 1977 I Love New York logo greets all arriving passengers. I love New York, and I love LaGuardia. But I'm here to view shorter than the day from a different perspective. And here's that beautiful piece of art seen from the lower level.
Gotta say, that was one of the most pleasant baggage claim areas I've ever seen, especially in the United States. Outrageous! Now just off to the side of the terminal is a special area that leads to the parking garage, and I'm looking ahead, it looks like there's a bit of a history of LaGuardia there, which of course I'm always interested in, so I'm walking in that direction to just check it out. I think I'm going to spend a lot of time here since I love this airport and its history. Behind me are quotes from Fiorello LaGuardia, the airport's namesake. LaGuardia himself, he does not get that much attention nowadays, and it's great to see quotes that he actually said. This piece of art is called LaGuardia's Vistas, and it's all on glass. Do you guys know the story of uh, how LaGuardia Airport came to be? Well, Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia was on a flight from Chicago to New York City, and he landed in Newark, New Jersey, EWR. When he landed, he said, well, my ticket says New York City. And the whole story of how LaGuardia Airport got its name is depicted on the walls here. Mayor LaGuardia refused to get off his flight when he landed at Newark. In the 1930s, the already existing airport on this site went through a few name changes. None of these names would last for very long because after LaGuardia's trip to Newark, well, the masses wanted this airport to be renamed LaGuardia. And by 1947, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey became the airport operator and still is to this day. The Port Authority operates airports, bridges, and more in this area. In 1964, the CTB, or Central Terminal Building, was constructed in the space I'm at right now. There are many airport improvements throughout the years, like runway extensions over the water. If you watch my channel, you know I fly a lot out of Terminal D. It's still around at the filming of this video, but not for much longer. The same applies to Terminal C. Perhaps one of the most iconic changes at LaGuardia was the construction of a new modern control tower, which opened in 2010. And by 2016, well, construction started on the site we're at today to create a whole new LaGuardia. This picture behind me from 1967 is a perfect representation of what the airport terminal used to look like. There are multiple fingers that extended from one central check-in and baggage claim area. It was a very tight space, and in recent years, as aircraft got larger and larger, congestion was an issue. We are standing in that exact spot right now, right over here, and the terminal is completely different. The gate areas are actually accessible from bridges, and in a few moments after going through TSA, I'm going to go over one of those bridges. And this is what the final product is going to look like. It's time to leave this area of great history and go back to the check-in area. On the rear wall of the check-in area is a large piece of art featuring iconic images of New York City. This is a pretty neat piece of art, a hot dog stand in the form of a mosaic. I have to say, this is a great representation of what you'd find on a New York City street. I like how the sign for Grand Central is placed right above the TSA area. The Statue of Liberty and Pizza. How New York is that? I love how this airport lets you know that we are in New York City. Yeah, we're definitely in New York City. Thank you so much, Terminal B. It's now time to head on over to my gate. But before I go through TSA, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Come join the thousands who have already subscribed so they never miss one of the most detailed and inspiring aviation channels out there. What a modern security checkpoint. I was able to use TSA PreCheck to get me through security without having to remove my shoes or take out my laptop. If you can get PreCheck, I say go for it. It's a travel essential. Okay, I just finished TSA and the first thing that I noticed is that there's a large window in front of me, so I'm going to take a look out. To me, the recognizable runway 1331 and Flushing Bay behind it made me feel nostalgic for the old terminal, but look how huge the new ramp is. More ramp space equals less gate delays, but I still recall the past while standing here. Not a bad view. This reminds me of the old central terminal building. Between the fingers, there were large windows and you were able to see out between them. Interesting. To get to the gate area, it's necessary to go up. In the old Terminal B, four TSA checkpoints led straight out to four separate concourses, but this way, everyone is herded the same way. The excitement is building. I'm getting more and more excited as I get closer to the gate area. At the top of the escalator, the art installments continue. This time, it's balloons, and they're scattered throughout the building. 
To me, it's a nice and festive touch, although at first it did look like actual stray balloons. There are many stores, and you're obliged to walk through them to get to the gate area. This is a very European concept. It's because of the turns of the shopping area that my mind took me elsewhere and I lost sense of direction and I felt like I was far away from an airport, but signs and New York City themed items provided reminders that I was still in the Big Apple. This place is light years away from the old Terminal B. The end of the shopping area leads to a much larger space flanked by food vendors. This is a very bustling space. I've not seen this many people in a shopping area in quite a long time, and there are a lot of stores here. Now, one thing that's very unique about Terminal B is that there's a fountain right in the middle of this area. And I actually wanted to take a look at the water in the fountain because there's different types of art that gets illuminated on it. Very interesting. There's the fountain right behind me. But when I was visiting, the fountain was not on. So I guess I'm gonna to have to explain it. Behind me are some projectors. Those projectors actually shine lights onto water that cascades from the ceiling, illuminating it, showing multiple images. Images of New York City, images of the area. It's supposed to be spectacular, but there's just nothing there today. But who needs a fountain when you've got views like this? I'm going to get closer to the action by visiting the gate area for gates 11 to 31, also known as the Western Concourse. At the time of filming this video, this part of the new terminal was not 100% complete, and that's why I'm walking here. Nostalgia. Even though I'm flying United today, which is on the other side of the terminal, I decided to take a quick look at the area where American operates out of, and behind me is part of the old terminal building, the original B terminal. It's gonna be torn down very, very soon, but I just had to take one last look. That's the old flooring. I've spent many, many times walking on that. I'm gonna go check this out, and then I'll head over to my gate area. Eventually, passengers will be able to walk on a bridge over the ramp to get to this area, but for now it's these old walkways that you must walk to to get to the gates. What I love are the windows, especially this view of the old D concourse which was recently shut down. It was the last remaining concourse and now flights have been moved into the new structure. This is like stepping into history here. I remember this terminal very, very well. It's almost completely gone. Once you leave the old gates, it's a short walk to a temporary walkway leading to the new gates, 11 to 31. What a magnificent space. High ceilings, lots of light, wow.
Okay, I'm heading back to the central area right now. Just taking this all in. This may be the very last time that I walk in this particular area. And here's the bridge that will replace this temporary walkway. In the distance, you can see the bridge I'll take to get to my gate later on. There is a lot of walking that I'm doing on my little tour here at the airport today. Well, I just went from the future to the past and now I'm going back into the future again. I need to work my way over to the gate area that my flight is gonna be departing out of. I had to pass by more dining establishments before I arrived at the bridge. Yes, planes on the ramp can fit under this bridge on their journey to and from the runway. What an amazing space. The bridge that hasn't opened yet should look similar to this one once it's open. From the bridge, I descended by the Grand Escalator to the area where my flight will depart from, the Eastern Concourse. But before that, I stopped mid-level because I want to visit the brand new United Club here at LaGuardia before my United Airlines flight. This is a beautiful club with modern and pleasant furniture, and it's well lit because it sits above the gate area and shares the open space with its large side windows. It was nice to be up here and take in the view below. I took some time to freshen up in the modern restroom before I made my way over to the buffet. What did I think of the food here? Phenomenal. There were plenty of diverse options, both hot and cold, and with very few people in the lounge at the time of my visit, I took advantage of the many great items that were available to me. To be able to enjoy these foods in such a cozy space was just delightful. The atmosphere was top notch. Then I checked my phone for my flight status. Well, I've made it to the United Club here in Terminal B at LaGuardia Airport. I just found out that my flight is delayed. I'm going to Chicago and I've got a connection, so let's see how this works out. So with that, I continued down the escalator to see if I can get on an earlier flight, but learned that I had to remain on my original flight. This area is very similar to the Western Concourse. Here's a quick look up at the United Club that I just left. You can see how it's on a mezzanine level. Perhaps my favorite part of the terminal was the small model of the old LaGuardia Tower, since this channel focuses very heavily on ATC. I love it. Before my flight, I took some time to walk around the stunning new structure and look out the window. Aircraft gates are arranged side by side on all sides of the concourse, creating less congestion on the ramp. Gone are the old alleyways allowing for one plane at a time operations. Just observing from looking out the window, you can just see the space in the maneuverability room. Even the side closest to the headhouse is efficient because it can be used in one direction, allowing for all traffic to move the same way. No more bottlenecks. Finally, an efficient ramp for LaGuardia. Oh, and the gate areas. They are clearly dedicated to New York City. You don't find locally branded boarding gates very often. This terminal is a proud New Yorker and flaunts all the aspects of being in the Big Apple. The shopping area here is plentiful with great variety in both the stores and dining. That's what New York City is all about, diversity. I just can't believe how open this terminal is. There are a lot of people here, but it doesn't feel that crowded. 
beautiful lighting illuminates the waiting areas, and if you're looking for some peace, well, there's a small park complete with trees inside the terminal. It's like being in Central Park surrounded by the hustle and bustle of New York City. What a major difference from the old LaGuardia. This really neat flight information display system not only provides gate information, but tells you which way to go. I looked for my flight, and it said to go to the gate, which is to the left, and that will take me one minute to get there. I love what's being displayed here in New York. Well, I'm at my gate. It's gate number 46. My flight is delayed one hour and 30 minutes. Hopefully, I'll make my connection on our hair today, but I'm counting on it. After spending several hours in Terminal B, my Embraer 175 has finally arrived from Chicago. This aircraft was delivered in 2017. Today's flight is operated by SkyWest for United Express. The ground staff needs to do a quick turn because there are many people who need to connect to other flights in O'Hare. All right, I'm now boarding the Embraer 175 here at LaGuardia Airport, operated by SkyWest for United Airlines. All right, I'm on board. I'm in seat 4A in the first class cabin today. The ground crew did a phenomenal job of turning this aircraft around and boarding was one of the quickest and most efficient boardings I'd ever seen. What I also knew is that with the new design, we'll be able to leave the gate and get to the taxiways quickly. Despite the rain, LaGuardia Ground Control gave us instructions to taxi to the departure runway, runway 13. Fortunately, traffic was very light and we were told to cross runway 4 without interfering with arriving traffic on the runway, like we saw at the beginning of this video when I was driving into the airport. We are now all set for takeoff on the 7,000 foot long runway 13. LaGuardia's runways aren't particularly long at around 7,000 feet and they intersect with each other, so careful coordination needs to be executed when aircraft are on and crossing the runways. Generally, for one departure on one runway, there's one arrival on the other, and this can make the work of the controller challenging. There are no plans to change the runway layout of LaGuardia. All the work is focused on the terminal areas. If you watch my channel, you know I've been focusing heavily on my Delta flights out of the C and D terminals, but it was so nice to try something different and experience the new Terminal B for the first time. It was such a refreshing experience. And for the first time, I felt like a terminal in New York represented New York. I could not think of any other terminal that flaunts its home city as much as this does. As for my flight, it was very enjoyable and the service and cabin were great. The only issue was the delay. The aircraft had a delay coming from Chicago and because of this, my connection time in O'Hare was reduced to around 10 minutes. But in case you were wondering, United really came through for me. Despite running to my connecting gate, I learned that they were holding the airplane to accommodate late arriving passengers like myself. This was so appreciated because my connecting flight was the last flight out and I really did not want to spend the night at a Chicago hotel. Well, I rushed, I'm out of breath, and I made it aboard my United A320. It's off to the skies again on my A320 for the rest of my journey. Well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun putting it together for you. It breaks away from what I'm used to, and I was so happy with what I saw. Very soon, terminals C and D at LaGuardia will go away as new terminals are being constructed there. I've got many videos on my channel that depicts what's going on in the C and D terminals, so don't forget to check them out. I'm going to sign off for now, but as you wait for my next adventure, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell button so that you get alerted as to when I post something new. Thanks everybody and long live LaGuardia Airport.